Thank you, Jesus. Do you guys, what I want you guys to read, I think it's Ronnie. You got this one? I believe I do. You do? Hold on. That would be, uh, John. But I want you to know God is not cold and God does not say that. Because he knows and he understands. There's some demons out there who want to kill yeah, and destroy you. you. Hold on. Uh-huh. Why do you come? That's no, they cannot believe. Ten. Okay, John, you're 10 10. John, you know, Ron, you do John 12, 39 and 40 because I missed that. Read that. John 12, 39 and 40. Then you're John 10 10. Okay. 39 and 40. Therefore, they did not, shall I take it from 38? Yeah. Okay, matter of fact, I'll go that step further, from 37. Although he had done so many signs before him, they did not believe in Jesus. That the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Lord been deceased. Therefore, they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so their eyes shall be healed. Right, that's what I was just saying. She was going out, and she was divining that these guys were the way to salvation. She didn't even get saved herself. Mm. You get what I'm saying? She was so caught up in mess with the devil. Amen. But she wasn't even believing herself. And sometimes the devil will let you sit up in church. So the devil will let you sit up there with your mom, knowing your mom and daddy is, is saved and always preaching to you. But he will stop in the ears and he will harden that heart if you're not careful. If you don't sit up there and start listening and trying to ask and seek after God, you sit up in church and go to hell. Uh-oh. Amen. 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 Got it? Amen. Amen. All right. And so he's going to be reading out of the book of John 10 and 10. It says, For the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life, and that life more abundant. So by all rights and means, God, because you refuse to obey him, he could just leave it to the devil. Amen. And he could just say, hey, go ask the devil to help you. But God knows the devil ain't trying to help nobody. The Bible says the thief comes but to kill, mm-hmm. to steal, and to destroy. Yes. Do you understand? He's here. He just wants to tear your life up. And then demons, they lay low, because they're happy. As long as you ain't obeying God, hmm. he knows they're in charge. The only way they cannot be in charge of your life is if you're obeying the God, if you're obeying the Lord. So, you know, he don't let you go out about your merry way. Bring your own ditch and fall in it, because that's exactly what's going to happen. And he's not going to help you, because he came to kill if he could kill you, he would have. God allowed that devil to kill you. He would, we'd all be dead. We wouldn't even be here. Mm-mm. But he wants to steal. Mm-hmm. So you know all those demon spirits promising these witches and these witches think that they're going to beat somebody have something? They're lying to them. Because in the end, they just going to end up lifting their eyes up from hell. Amen? But the devil, he just wants to destroy you. And the thing about it is, is you might not see it right now, but when he pulls that rug out from under you, you're going to feel the effects of sin. That's right. And he ain't going to have no pity and no mercy on you. That's right. So I need you to understand that there is a spirit realm, and God is saying, either you're yielding these hands, this thought, this body, the service of him, and you do it, live in your life the way he wants you to do it. Or if not, you ain't in charge. He's letting you know. You ain't in charge. The devil is. It's either him or the devil. Fisher preaches it all the time. It's either God or the devil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ain't no middle ground. Mm-mm. None. Because once you tell God no and you start to step on the devil's territory, you've given that devil every right mm, to do your life and do whatever he wants to do. Free reign. And he ain't in there to take no back seat. Mm-mm. He's in there to take charge. That's and right. not just a you and your thought, your life. He's in to take charge of everybody that comes in contact with you, through you. Mm-hmm. Trying to be that influence. So you have to know and understand that God is saying who's in charge. A lot of you think you're in charge, but you're not. And you might feel like you're in charge for a minute. But when the devil says, okay, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Snatch you right up and mess you right up. Mm-hmm. You've been waiting for this opportunity to give it to <laughs> Give it to him. Mm, 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 mm. Wrap him up. Man. Because he hates us. With a passion. He hates us. Amen. 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 
So by every right, he says that God said, I can't say, hey, go to the devil because I see you obey. But he says, I can't let your mind have life and that more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. And God is a loving, caring man. Oh, loving God. He Jesus. loves us. So much that he laid down his life for us. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, one more sheep. All right, verse 18. It says, is this? All right, so then the same followed Paul. Okay, so it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination she met us, which brought her masters much gain by a soon saying. So you know what? People just use her. She had her masters. She would give them the word, and then they, the masters would make money off of her. Let's just say it like that. All right? And the same followed Paul and us in Christ, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did, and this did she many days. But Paul being greedy, turned and said in the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, I come out of her. And he came up the same hour. So like, for a couple of days, this girl's walking around following these apostles, saying this stuff. And finally Paul just said, and you know what? Told me to give it the first day, but I would think that maybe she wasn't ready to quite give it up. Amen. Just like some of you guys ain't quite ready to give up something that, and I'm not talking about, yes, you're not supposed to touch, you're not supposed to drink, you're not supposed to, but it's about because Jesus didn't do it. So if Jesus doesn't do it, we're not supposed to do it. But God is dealing with something in your life right now. Two days. You're in the valley of decision where God is saying, choose. This day, we'll be on the but I'm waiting before you. Get this thing up for me. Amen. Do it for me. Because uh, he wants to take you higher in him. But he can't. But you still hold on to the world. He wants to bless you, but he can't. When you still hold on to sin. Because he's not going to bless no mess. Because then you know God is about saving your soul. If he bless you in your mess and you think your blessing is all right and you're on your way to heaven. God says, well, i got to let you see this mess that you're in, the serving Yielding your, your members and serve your children to obey the devil over the... And let me say it again. If you don't obey God, you're choosing to obey the devil. Amen. And he's letting you know it's nothing good. I'm going to come out of this side right here. And he's telling you, I'm trying to tell you, there is a hell, there is spirits that want to kill and destroy you. Amen, that's obey right. Obey me. Do what I say do. Trust me. Because if you don't keep bad on this side, you're going to suffer from the repercussions. And, and you know, you think you're in charge, but the devil's in charge. Uh -huh. He's controlling everything, and he's destroying everything around you bit by bit. And you don't even know it until finally you're going to hit the end road, which is total devastation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's what he's trying to get to you today, is letting you know, hey, who's in charge? Make me in charge. With me, you have nowhere to go with us. I'm saying God. I'm not saying me. I'm talking about God. He said, with him, you have nowhere to go but up. You need to know, and this is demon class 101. You need to know demons are very real. The devil is very real in your life. The thoughts that are rolling through your mind, that sometimes you go, where that thought come from? That was the devil. Amen? Amen. That person that came up to you and said, hey, let's go over here and do this. That's the devil talking to you. That's the devil. The one way he says, Adam and Eve in the garden. And God said, don't eat of that fruit of that tree. And that little serpent came up and said, did he say that? Did he say something else? He didn't mean that. He don't want you to be like God. <laughs> so that person or that thought that comes to your mind when God says do this, yeah. and the thought comes to the mind that says, well, I didn't mean that. <laughs> and they'll whisper it in your ear. That's the devil <laughs> trying to get you to disobey God and do what he says to do. Because he wants to kill your life. He wants yes, to he yes, he do. kill from you. Yes, he do. Enjoy your happiness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wants to destroy you. Amen. 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 So many of you are in the valley of decision today, right now. Whom do you serve? You need to begin to hear the Holy Spirit today and be honest and say, God, who, who, I'm serving you, Lord, in this situation. Or, okay, God, I'm not. I'm not serving you. Because I'm going to tell you right now. Um, God, God could have cast a demon out that woman right away, but you know what she was like probably more than likely the way these apostles worked when they began to seek the Lord. The Lord would deliver them right away. They get delivered. Then apostles lay hands on them, then demons would come right out. But for some reason for her, 
Maybe she liked the power, or maybe that she liked everything that she got with the devil by being that soothsayer. But a lot of you guys are going to have to start talking to God about mm -hmm. the reason why you stand. Stand in the muck and the mire. Why and why I keep doing the same thing over and over again? I know the end of it for me is destruction. I know the end of it for me is death. It's time to start talking to God about those things because your soul is being weighed in the balance. You need to sit there and be honest and sincere with God because you know what? This could cost you your soul. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read out of the book of Revelation 3 and I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit on it. I'm going to stop. Because you know what? I was praying for my kids the other day. Because you know what? I, I said, Lord, you know what? I know you promised that me and my house, all my household is going to be saved. But they're not really, they're not saved yet. And I'm just going to keep it real. In my eyesight, I don't see them really serving you with all their heart. Amen. So, hey, I had to get on my knees yesterday night to really, really pray. And especially after Wednesday night, I said, Lord, oh, my goodness, you going to come back soon. And I just want them to go to heaven. Amen. But I'm going to read out the book of Revelation chapter 3. And this is what the Lord gave me. Amen. talking now. Amen. Well, let me read up to verse 16, 15 and 16, because God is, you're in the valley of decision right now. God, one thing about us, though, God gives you a choice. So, okay, I want to do like God, but I don't know how. But then, you, you know what? God sent Jesus Christ. And, and I didn't have to pay for my sins. God whooped Jesus for me. Everything that I did wrong... He, Jesus took the beating. Mm. And then not only that, Jesus said, hey, I'm not going to leave you here alone. He left and he sent back the Holy Spirit so that you and I, amen, could have power to walk upright and talk upright and be right, be what God wanted us to be. So amen. So we are without excuse. I am without excuse. I can't sit up there and say the devil made me do it. Or Lord, I didn't have a choice in the situation. You have a choice every single day who are you going to serve? Amen. Are you going to serve the Lord? Are you going to serve the devil? Mm -hmm. The prophet of life, you won't be obedient because this is what this boils down to. You're going to be obedient to God or you're not going to be obedient to God. And like the prophet Elijah, he said, he told the people, why hold you between two opinions? He said, if God is God, then be for him. If Baal is God, then be for him. If God is God, be for him. If the devil is God, be for the devil. Mm -hmm. That's what he told them. And God is saying, stop holding between two opinions. I'm telling you to do so. Don't tell me, trust me. Live for me. Be obedient to me. Because if you're not, you're serving the devil. So Revelation 3, 15. And he's talking to the churches. And it says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. So you're sitting up in church, you're like, I'm saved. But you know what? I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to really... Be on fire for God. Mm. But at the same time, I'm not going to really be on fire for God. I ain't going to go out to the world because I know what's out there. So I'm just going to sit here comfortable. I'm not going to be on fire and I'm not going to be out in the world. And God said, I will, but you are cold or hot. Because you got one foot in and one foot out. Mm. You're walking like this one minute and you're walking like that the next minute. That was says a double-minded man. Don't think you don't get mm. anything from him. Mm-mm. Amen? Amen. So he said, I would that you were cold or hot. And you guys don't know I'm talking to you seriously, but I'm talking to myself too. All right? But this is a serious one. So he said, I would that you were hot or that you were cold. He said, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will steal you out of my mouth. He don't want no lukewarm Christians because you know what? The Bible says he's shaking the tree. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm not Amen. shaking only the earth. He said, I'm shaking heaven. And he said, everything that can be shook is about to be shook. Mm -hmm. So that the things that are permanent can remain. Wow. So you can be shook. God, you're meant to shake you. Amen. And you better be careful because that song Pastor Keisha always says, there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this way. Yes, yes. And if your soul ain't angered at Jesus, mm -hmm. oh, oh, wow. oh, yeah. you just might drift away. Thank you. Jesus, you're coming to a time where you're going to have to say, for God I live and for God I die. It ain't going to be all this one foot in and one foot out. And if you're living for God or I live for the devil, 
and he's shaking that tree. And whoever's going to get shook, you're going to get shook. Because you're, kind of, you're in a, we're in a place and a time now where it's either God or it's not. And some of y'all are going to have to give up your lives for your faith in Jesus Christ. Are you willing to do that today? Because I don't know. And you don't be lying to yourself. If you can't sit up there and just obey God, y'all just stay off the bar. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad I'm trying, but I can't. And how are you going to sit up there and put your life on the line? How are you not going to take that market that you say you know food? If you can't even just obey your simple commandment. Oh, come on now. Now don't get me wrong, guys. Ouch. I know some of y'all are, don't get me wrong. You're, you're working and you're trying. Don't. Because you know what? Being saved doesn't mean all of a sudden I'm this perfect person. Right. You know what I mean? And you're, you're striving. Don't get me wrong. You're learning how to walk upright. God, I'm working on this. I'm working. And I can't seem to get a rival. Get back up and keep going. God knows your heart. God knows if you are sincerely trying, but I'm talking about being in the valley of decision where you know God has said, hey, you haven't even made it up in your mind yet, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to start doing stuff your way. God wants you to get to a place where you are for Him. Amen. Amen. It's like being in a relationship, and you got somebody, and, you know, one minute they're calling you, the next minute they're not. One minute they treat you right, the next minute they're not. <laughs> Right? One minute they're there for you, the next minute they're gone, you don't know where they're at. Do you understand what, how God is feeling? What is it? Is it going to be me or is it going to be him? You guys know what I'm saying? What's going to be me or going to be the devil? Come on now. You, you can't expect God not to expect that from you because that's what we expect. Is it going to be me or is it going to be her? Hallelujah! Let's go ahead. You know that's what we want. God said the same thing. Is it going to be me or is it going to be him? Come on, y'all. He says you're in the valley of decision. Make your decision. Do you want me? Amen. You want that. Amen. Mm. But he says if you're lukewarm, you think you're going to play both of us, you think he's going to spit you out of his mouth. Amen. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I'm not talking to you. I know that because we're never going to be perfect, perfect, perfect. But we're trying. Amen. And now, God, I just thank God ain't right. Because sometimes we just thank God ain't right, y'all. And sometimes it's mm-hmm. something in us that I got to say, Lord, I want to do this. But that's what you got to tell God. I really want to pay my tithe, but Lord, God, I don't see how I can do that. Because one day God told me, pay a tithe on the offering. And I told God, um, because I was excited about paying my tithe. Amen, amen. And God told me, I want you to pay this much tithe on the offering. And I told God, you know, God, I can barely pay my time. And I, I told him, and I seriously, I said, God, I can't. I was so sincere. I wanted to pay. But I said, God, I can't see that. And God said, trust me, but God did something for me. I will never forget it. I was suffering from depression really, really bad. And God put a drop in my spirit, bam, of joy. And I don't know if you've ever just never had, like, it was like being out in the desert Thursday and somebody took a drop on your tongue. You just feel every bit of it. It was just a drop. And I felt this drop of joy. And God said, if you trust me, he says, I'm going to give you this answer. You'll experience all this with me. So I'm telling you today, if you are sincerely struggling with something, and you know you're in the valley of decisions, God is saying, give this up to me. But God is telling you, it's not, I'm not going to sit there and play no fool. You want him or you want me? Amen. You want the devil or you want me? You want my life or you want the devil's life? It ain't going to be both of us. Because he said, I'm going to spew you out my mouth. Then you sit there and you be honest with him and you tell him, Lord God, you know what? I keep messing up because I don't know why I keep messing up. I'm trying to figure it out. And if you start really talking, God will start to minister to you because God understands your thoughts are far off. He knows you better than you know yourself. Amen. Yes, and he, he does. has a way of making you stand and being strong. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like when you look at your kids and you know you're suffering from, they're suffering from a problem. You're like, okay, this is what I got to do for them to help them stand up and be right, you know. Sometimes you got to whoop them. Sometimes you just got to love them. Sometimes you got to go and buy them some clothes. Sometimes you got to buy them some shoes. Sometimes you got to sit down and read with them. But God knows how to give you what you need so that you'll stand, so that you'll be victorious. Amen. All right? Thank and he's you saying, see. stop playing me. <laughs> Make up your mind who's it going to be. Jesus, stop playing me. So look, I was praying for my kids the other day, and the Lord told me this tonight, because I was like, Lord, and he said, behold, this is verse 20, he said, I stand at the door and knock. Yep, that's my scripture. So he's knocking at the door of your heart. (laughs) Amen? 
And he said, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and be with him. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. He said, let me in, give me a try. Amen, amen. And he's saying, if anybody will open that door and receive him and say, okay, God, you know what? And God ain't asking for you to have this big amount of faith because you don't have it. Even if you have a tiny bit of Because if you open that door, you got a tiny bit of faith. That's the fact that you're here today lets us know that you got that bit of faith to start you out with. Amen? But he said, if you just let me in and receive me in, he says, I'm going to start with you and you and me. We're going to be best friends. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll treat you right. I'll bless you. I'll love you. Come on. You'll never experience a relationship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, look at that. Amen. He says, I'm going to stop and I'm going to fellowship with you. And everything that you need, I'm going to be it. That's what he's saying. But he said he's knocking at the door, and you got to open that door and let him in. Amen. But then he said, To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. He's telling you, though, I'm going to come in and I'm going to stop with you. He said, But you got to overcome. Amen. Yes, yes. So it ain't just, okay, I'm saved and I'm so happy about it. Yes, and I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to sit here and say, Jesus, come back until I die. You know, because that's what some people are doing. They just sit right there and say, I ain't going to move. I ain't going to get up and do nothing for the Lord. And I ain't going to go out there and do nothing in the world. I'm just going to sit right here. Mm. Amen. But God said, it ain't that easy. So you got demons. That's messing with you all the time. Amen. They try to get you out of your place with God. So you can sit there if you want to, but eventually that demon's going to kick you out of that chair, and either you're going to fall to the left, or you're going to fall to the right. Hopefully God said fall to the right. Follow me. Because he's going to let that demon kick you out that chair because he wants you to raise up. Amen? And he wants you to give him your all. That's right. He wants you. You guys know you're in a war. How many of you guys know you're in a war? Hallelujah. How many of y'all know you're in a war? I do not know. You are in the spiritual war, man. And you got to fight. You ain't going to finish it. You ever seen that movie where you had a really gung ho soldier to be like, I'm about to go fight over here. And then you got the ones that's scared that say, I'm going to stay in this hole and hide out till the war is over. Amen. The same for one of the holes that gets killed. Because mm -hmm. the, the enemy's coming. He's coming for you. You guys know what I'm saying? And God said, you got to get up and you got to start fighting. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. You got to start standing up against that way to say it. Yes. You yes. got to start telling that says, no, behave. I'm not doing this. That That's what he's saying. You got to raise up and make a decision and you got to be counted. You got to get what I'm saying? Amen. But he said to him that overcomes. So when you say you love somebody, it ain't just a word. It's an action. I say, why are you calling me Lord, but you don't do what I say? Amen, amen. Why you say you love me? You can't do what I ask you to do. You guys hear what I'm saying? But he says to him that overcomes. Let me read one more verse. I know I'm saying y'all there. Let me just do this. When it says Revelation 12 and 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. You're going out telling people about what good Jesus did for you. And then you're going around telling me how he saved your soul, how he changed your life, how he made your home. Amen? Amen. And they love not their lives unto death. And the ones that overcome are the ones who love not their life. Hey, Lord, I'm going to lay it down. Hallelujah. I Amen. die for you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I die for you. He, you know what? People don't know. He ain't asking us. A lot of us over in foreign countries, they have to lay their life down. They get their hands cut off. They get killed for the gospel. Yes, and yes. And they lay down happily. Yes, they yes. Know, Jesus. They Hallelujah. Know. Amen. But we can't in that situation yet. You know what I mean? But God is asking you to lay down that flesh every day. Die to self. Yes. Die to selfishness. Okay? Because then you're in the devil's territory. And the devil is going to take charge. He's going to tear it up. God itself, it ain't about you. That song say, it ain't about us. Yes, yes. But it's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, it's not about you. But it's about Jesus. And yes, yes. yes. It's about him. Let it be about him. Let it be about him, because he's all about you. He died for you. He is all about you. The Bible says he has a multitude of thoughts about you. Yes, yes. Your life. Oh, Amen. Now. 
He loves you. Now, one thing about him, because right now you're in the valley of decision, and God is saying, choose to stay home with him third. Is it me? Or is it him? Amen. Is it him? God? Or is it him? Go somewhere else. You talk too much. But I guarantee you, he said the devil comes to kill, kill, and destroy you. So if you follow the devil, you're making the wrong decision. Because Jesus said, I came that you might have life and not have anymore. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody stand.